the restaurants you love, the food you crave, and the people that make it all happen. We tell their stories on the Paper Trails Podcast with Albemarle Paper Supply. What's going on, guys? How are you? This is Nick Calgary-Mitros, host of the Paper Trails Podcast, and we are back, episode nine, season two of our podcast. I am super pumped. I mean, this is, I mean, first off, like, <laughs> look at what's happening right now. We are, we are actually with Randall and Joanne with Cloyster, Cloyster Honey? Yes. Cloyster right. Honey. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina, and um, I am, the moment we, I stepped on the property, and I heard I was putting on an actual suit, you know, to check out the honey, I got fired up. And so listen, uh, these guys are local. They've had their business for over 10 years now. And now uh, we're going to talk about bees. Yeah. Bees and bees honey and, and the business. And so uh, this will be a two-part episode. Uh, the first part, obviously, you can see we're outside. We got boxes. Ha- you know, hives. 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 Okay. Shows you how much I know about what's happening here. <laughs> so we have some hives out here that we're going to crack into and look at and um, really just learn, um, I think from Randall here in a second, about the hives and how it works and the bees and you know we'll take a little bit of time and check that out and we'll have, uh, we'll have Austin come out here and, uh, and record for us. And so real quick, you guys wanna do a little, little intro maybe about the business or? Sure, sure, go ahead, you start. Joanne, you bought, this? Joanne bought me a beehive for Christmas in 2006. Okay. I didn't want it, didn't need it, hadn't asked for it. Really. Okay. Had a friend that had it, kind of, I'd seen it once or twice. And um, so no, no interest in like no. Well, I hadn't expressed the interest. Yeah. It kinda, okay, it's kind of cool. Okay, I've always been kind of nerdy and never too afraid of things that are a little bit difficult, a little bit painful. So, okay. um, <laughs> painful. Yeah. So, and I like keeping animals alive, and so it's there's yeah. that piece of it. So she bought me a hive, and um, that was in Jan- De- or Christmas, December. and then went to the Mecklenburg Beekeepers Association meeting in January. They have a class. Okay. And it lasts for about three months, and ended up getting bees, and by April we had like three hives, and then by the end of the year we had like eight hives. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it kind of took off from there. there. Yeah. Started as a hive. How many you guys have now? How many hives? Well, we've been as high as like 60 hives. Okay. We're probably closer to 25 right now. Okay. And we have about 10 or 12 right here on on the property. Most of them are in the mountains now. Okay. And because we're working on sourwood honey right now in the mountains. Okay. Yeah. So you guys took some of them up there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And and that's because of the region. Like that's because because of, because of the bloom. What's well, getting ready to bloom. Yeah. And like different thing, different plants bloom different times. Okay. And so this a plant called the sourwood tree, which we have a couple. There's one right up there, but we have one that's in bloom up here on front. Okay. We'll show you. Um, so the sourwood tree blooms in the mountains usually mid June to mid July. Okay. So after we're finished with wildflower down here in Charlotte, we'll take we take all of our good house, or most of our good houses up there to the mountains, and combine them with another grew another company we work with uh-huh. and um so we we have about 80 80 mm-hmm. hives up there right now nice mm-hmm. so hopefully yeah. we'll make a couple thousand pounds on yep. up there we'll try some sour couple, later it's a couple my, thousand pounds it's wow. my favorite honey I love really it. yeah it's is there favorite. a distinct difference oh, in yeah. Tape? yeah yeah like wine like uh, mushrooms yeah anything that is hey, you we're know, learning from the earth. carrots <laughs> everything's yeah, different <laughs> everything from the earth tastes different i love yeah. this yeah. i love this i'm i am i'm getting more excited as yeah. we talk <laughs> the only thing that i've ever seen uh-huh. to be transparent i think i've seen a couple of youtube videos of people that like save oh. uh-huh. bee like yeah, beehives yeah, yeah. or something yeah. like they'll you know they'll be like in a house Swarms, or something yeah. Yeah. yeah and like you know they'll find like the the queen, the, the queen yeah. and put in like a little plastic thing and then like you know and i'm like yeah. okay like this yeah. is kind of cool yeah. so uh, yeah. anyway i'm excited to hang out with these guys more later on in the office and, and talk about their story but in the meantime we're gonna get suited ready? up and we're gonna check out the uh the actual hives yeah and so okay. you guys ready we're yeah, good ready. All, right. all right let's cool let's get you give all me, give me up. suit up Austin, you getting this? <laughs> awesome. All right, so they might land on the Space. screen, That's so right. you're perfectly safe, okay? But they probably keep them. Mary, married? No. Okay. So we're getting ready to open a one of our hives. Okay. And you know, see beekeepers use smoke all the time. Okay. And all this is is pine needles okay. and fire. That's it. And the reason you use it is for pheromones. Bees communicate via pheromones. Okay. So when you start to rattle a hive, the bees inside will start sending off pheromones like something's happening. It's loud, it's a, it's a rumble I'm not used to. Okay. And another key for them is carbon dioxide. So when you don't want to open a hive and just like breathe into it heavy, 
because to them it's a bear or it's a possum or it's a raccoon or something coming to get their honey and get their get their babies. Okay. And so the smoke, you put the smoke, the screen bottoms on, so you okay. pump it underneath and a little bit inside. Um, the uh, you put weights on them and ke to keep the tops from blowing off in big storms. Okay. So, that's super technical. Um, <laughs> So you just put smoke on them, let it circulate just for a couple seconds, and then um, that should slow down their communications in the in the hive. So maybe they won't panic quite as bad. Okay. So this is a, a screen top. Okay. Now these have this they make this stuff called propolis. Okay. When we start out, these screens are perfectly clear. Uh huh. And then over time, they propolize. You can feel it. It's, it's, it's well, you're probably not quite as comfortable as I am. Um, it's, it's, it's bee glue. Okay. And that's how they make the hive weather worthy. They stop, they, they stop all drafts and stuff. Uh -huh. And they don't, they just don't like airflow. So, so what you have with the hive is you got the, the, the brood boxes. And so this is where the most of the bees are okay. and the queen okay. and the babies and most of their food. And then the supers, the smaller boxes you see stacked on these, are called supers, which means that's where you put them and the bees put their excess honey. Okay. And bees are, uh, they're not foragers, well they're foragers, but they're hoarders. So they will make as much food as they possibly can. Okay. So a strong hive, you keep piling boxes on, like the one over, that we'll go into next. Yep. And they'll keep filling them up. But there's there's honey in all of them? There is. Okay. But the, all, the honey we extract for our company uh -huh. is in the small boxes, in okay. the top. And the, and we leave this so they can feed their babies. Gotcha. And then we will pull honey. It's time to pull honey right, right now, so we should be extracting in the next couple days. And then... Um, how, how do you know when to extract? The, the, the calendar. For Charlotte, usually we try to pull this stuff by about June 10th. Okay. And then we don't pull any more honey from them. We let them keep the rest of the honey they make for the rest of the year. Uh-huh. For the, to get them through winter. So, hold, carry, hold this. Okay. This is going to weigh, uh, yeah, it's going to weigh about five pounds. So that's five pounds of honey right there. Five pounds of honey? So these are the most efficient engineers, I think, in, uh, check this out. This weighs, I don't know, eight ounces, yeah, this nine is ounces. Nothing. Yeah. So that, eight or nine ounces will hold five pounds okay. of honey. So, so this one's empty. That was empty. That, well, it's not totally empty. It, it, there's a little bit in it. Uh -huh. um, the, this hat is completely dry. It's called dry. Okay. And this has just a little bit of nectar in there. Gotcha. Started. Gotcha. I see it. So when bees bring their, you want the class? You want the class on it? Like, Sit so in. That seems you want the class. You want to know how to how yeah. to make honey? Yeah. Yeah. I so do. what bees go do is they go get pollen and nectar and water, and then they they bring the nectar back, which is about ninety percent moisture. Okay. Okay. And they. When they suck the moisture up, the nectar up, they um, combine it in their honey stomach. They have a honey stomach. Like cows have multiple stomachs. They have multiple okay. compartments. Okay. So they put the, the nectar in a honey stomach, and it combines with a couple enzymes. And then they bring it back to the hive, and they regurgitate it into these holes. Okay. And then house bees come, and they start working the honey. Because when they first bring it in, the nectar is like 90% water. Well, if you bottle that, then the bottle's going to ferment and it's going to explode. And that's not good for business. When Actually explode? Is. Well, they'll, they just build up pressure and then they pop. Okay. You know, so that's okay. not good. So what happens is the house bees come and they will suck up, they'll ingest the honey and they'll go and they'll blow bubbles with the honey. Uh-huh. And they'll fan air over it to dehydrate it. Okay. And they'll do that over and over and over until they get it below about 18% moisture. Okay. Once they get it below 18% moisture, at that point, they will cap it. So this is capped honey. Okay. This is honey that is in process. Okay. It may not be, there's, they're not quite full and it's not quite dry enough yet okay. to cap. Yeah. But the bees won't cap it until it is a stable product. Okay. So when we open up a frame and see this, we know that some is ready. Yep. This is not. Okay. And when we- So how, how, how long will it take to make the rest of this ready? At May 15th, they could do this in three days, two days. Oh, so this time quick. It, yeah, right now, it's there's, the nectar flow is really slowing down. Okay. So they're probably not even gonna finish this frame. Okay. So this frame is 
we will leave it out here and let them clean it up. Yeah. But this frame. Now you said house bees are the ones that go in and do it. So there's different kinds of bees. There's different jobs. Different jobs based okay. on their age. Okay. okay. I'll get in that in, in just one second. Okay. Yeah. So like this is completely capped front and back. Okay. Okay. So, so that's ready. That's ready to roll. And we'll we'll maybe I'll come out and videotape that at some point or something. But yeah. uh, Joanne will take a really sharp, really thin knife, uh -huh. cut the cappings off. Okay. On both sides. And we put it in a machine, and the centripetal force spins the honey out. Okay. Um, it's like a centrifuge. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it spins yeah, yeah. The honey out. And then once this is essentially we've spun it out, okay. we'll bring these back outside, and the bees will swarm to these things, and they, in two hours, there's dry as a bone. Because really? it's free food. They're coming back to get the food that's on this. It's amazing. Product. Wow. So I was talking about house bees. Yeah. When a bee is born, when they lay the egg, and then the the nurse bees that work in the nursery area of the of the hive, uh -huh. they feed the they feed the larva, and then it pupates, and it becomes a larva, and uh, or you know, becomes more of the, the immature worm, uh, immature bee, uh -huh. and then they seal the cap the the cap the brood, just like they cap the honey, and it depends on if it's a a male, a female, or a queen. It's you know. It's, up to 21 days as low as 16 days okay. it hatches as soon as the bee hatches pretty quick though a few yeah, weeks oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay it, at, at 16 day you know the the worker bees hatch and i'm sorry the queen it's uh 19 for the worker. they hatch and they come out and they clean their cell uh-huh and then they start feeding other larvae so they work in the nursery okay. for the first five days six days seven. okay at about you know day eight, nine, ten, those bees go from the nursery and they start working in the other parts of the hive. Okay. They're called house bees. Okay. So what the house bees' job is, they do the guard. They guard the door when the bees come in. Okay. We'll see more in a second. They um, are the undertaker bees. So they're walking around and if bees not moving too much, they're like you know, are you are you alive? Are you alive? And if you're not, they'll drag you out and you see two bees fly off with a, a dead bee. No kidding. Or be barely moving, you know. They clean the hive. They keep the hive totally clean. Okay. Some of them are very good. You know, they're always cleaning. Some of them are good honey makers. Okay. Everybody's got a different job. Yep. Yep. Um, and then for that's up until like week three, and then for the last three weeks, they only live six weeks. Are you serious? Forty-two days at best. Um, I did not know that. The 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 last three weeks, the bees are the the their job is the forage, and so that's the bees you see coming and going. They're a little bit older, a little bit near the end of their life. And if they get, you know, if they get out eaten by a bird out here, you know, it's not quite as big a loss gotcha. if you're in your last week of life as if you're in your third day of life. Gotcha. So they transition from the, the nursery to the house and all the jobs and then into the fortune. Wow. So, I didn't, so, so they have to reproduce yeah. pretty quick yeah. because of the sh just such a short lifespan. Starting about uh, late February. Sometime in February, depending on when the, the red maples start blooming, the um, the queen will be laying about two thousand eggs a day. Wow! So that's about one egg every minute, twenty four hours a day, and she'll do that up until probably late May, early June, when the nectar flow starts to slow down a little bit, uh -huh. and then she will curtail or she will slow down her egg lay. The hive kind of controls her and tells her what to do. She never leaves the hive. She's she's always there. She's always there. How, she lays does, egg. Does she? Does the queen pass away every 40 days as well? She can live six, seven, eight years. Oh, wow. Typically, they're the best producers in the first two, three years. But um, for the most part, we, we kind of go with a natural progression and uh -huh. let them replace and, and supersede unless we, How do they uh, get replaced? How, how does a queen get? So the when the queen lays eggs, she, she walks up to the cell, she measures it, makes sure it's clean, and then she'll turn around and deposit an egg. That egg will be, is if it's a fertilized egg, will become a female. Okay. So in the hive, about 97, 8 percent of all the bees in the hive are female. Okay. They do all the work. Okay. Males do nothing. <laughs> nothing. The only thing the males do is they hope to mate. <laughs> and that's it. More on that in a second. No, yeah. No more comment. Okay. Yeah, well, well, more on that well, in a second. We'll comment sure. later. <laughs> the um. So. So, she's laying um, egg just constantly. As the nurse bees are feeding, they're smelling the pheromones we were talking about okay, earlier. Yep. And it, when the, the larva is about 72 hours old, the, 
the nurse bees decide, they, they come out and they smell the pheromones of the hive and they're like, is our queen healthy? And they can tell about, by the pheromones, by the chemicals. Uh -huh. If the queen is healthy, then they will stop feeding that larva um, royal jelly, which is what it's had for the first 72 hours of its life. Okay. And they'll change over to something called bee bread. Okay. It's like pollen, nectar, and honey. Okay. And then that physiologically changes that bee from becoming a queen to becoming a worker. Okay. So every female starts out to be a queen, and then at about the three-day mark, they change it over to be a worker. Interesting. Unless they need queens. Then they keep feeding it royal jelly. Which, like, they know? Mm -hmm. Because of like the age of the queen that's yeah. in that? Yeah, because if the queen either dies and gets eaten for whatever reason that she left or just gets sick, uh -huh. then they will replace her. And they'll replace her with, they'll try to start with you know, four or five or six different queens at one time. And then the first one to hatch will typically try to run around and kill all the others before they hatch. Nature is brutally efficient. Or if their queen starts to ail, she starts to quit laying eggs uh -huh. and stuff, then they'll make some more queens and then once they get, get their new queen, uh -huh. they'll just quit feeding the old one. And she'll just wither away and die and then they haul her away. Drop her. <laughs> nature, is, nature is efficient, like you said. Brutally like, efficient. Brutally efficient. Um, so when it comes to the males, the queen, at, for some, some percentage, she lays unfertilized eggs and those are the males. Okay. okay. Um, the males are a little bit bigger. We'll try to, we can look in here and try to find the male. Um, so all these are females right now? Yeah, everybody in the tops. And the females have the stingers. The females do all the work. So guys have it good in the bee world, huh? Yeah. Right now, the bee. Um, so this is a queen excluder. And all this does is this helps keep the queen below this. Because if she, sometimes she will come up and lay, usually she wants to lay in the big boxes, okay. sometimes she'll come up and lay in the super. Okay. Are all these ready as well? No, now this, this is part of the house. So this is the, the primary part of the hive. And so, like this is all. Also, we don't, uh, yeah, yeah, we don't touch this, do we? Not too much. We, uh, oh, this one. I'll take it. A little, uh, a little agitated, huh? Well, like this. They woke up this morning and walked in here and ripped the roof off their house. So. You're taking anybody a little bit. Yep. So, this is part of the brood nest. Yeah. Is there multiple queens in here? No. Just one? Good day, there's only one. Um, that's all capped brood, that brown? Uh huh. That's brood that is going to hatch in the next probably week. Okay. And then around the outside edge, you see a little bit of white stuff? Yeah. That's the larva, so they're not yet formed enough to be capped. Gotcha. I see. So they start out as an egg and they feed them. See this little bump over here? Yeah. That's a queen cell. So they've they tried to make a queen. She made, and they're always trying to make a queen and getting ready in case in case her she dies. Uh huh. But here it's probably just a super seed. She's probably fine. You don't see a queen. Let's find you a brood. Let's find you a male. I mean, if we don't, it's fine. No, we will. It's not hard. That's a boy. See how big, see how big he is? Uh huh. A little bit, just a little bit fatter. Yep. He's got a round butt. He has no stinger. Uh huh. So the only thing he's doing is he walks around and he begs food, hoping they'll somebody feed him. No kidding. He can't feed himself. He has to beg food. So um, this is a pretty good looking hive. So you got honey up here on the edges. Okay. You've got larva, brood here, and this is cat brood. So this is going to hatch. She usually starts in the middle of the frame and moves out. Okay. And here, these are all. There's larva over here, so there's not nothing's captive. So these bees are still feeding. Gotcha. A lot of these are nurse bees, and they're putting food in those cells for the okay. for the girls. Just on a total side note, this is awesome right now. <laughs> this is like, I feel like I'm in an episode of National Geographic. Uh, it's kind of like channel. It. When I started doing this, I was like, I stick my fingers in the hive with you know 50,000 bees, and then how many bees are in here right now? A little bit of a light hive, so it's probably 40,000, 40,000 bees. But a full hive, like the hive behind you, it's probably got 60,000. So, jeez. Yeah. 
That's right. You want me to hold that? See the smoke? See, see them kind of going away from the smoke? Yeah. They're not crazy about it. It's like, you don't want to smoke too much. You're going to get them irritated. Okay. Yeah. But it does help control. So when I started doing this, I'm like, how hard can it be? I was in the army, and which is a, which is a good question. How difficult yes. is this? Difficult as you want. It's it's more difficult than a cat, but less than a kid. So. Yeah. Somewhere, <laughs> there's somewhere in between. Um, <laughs> the way it works. I like that. Yes. Okay. You know, if this dies, you can buy more bees. You can't do that with a kid, but with a, you know, a cat, there's a lot of cats. We have a stray cat we can feed around here. Um, <laughs> But then, and then the top is kind of, kind of graduating, just for airflow. Yeah. So the bees can keep the temperature regulated you know, the way they want. So they have to keep that queen somewhere around eighty, or somewhere around ninety degrees year round, okay. ninety two. So when it's a hundred degrees out here, they're bringing in lots of water, okay. and just blowing bubbles and fanning it to cool the temperature, and they're moving okay. the air through the hive. Okay. And then when it's twenty five degrees out here, they're all huddled around her, uh -huh. and keeping her warm. Nice. That's called a cluster, not cloister. Cluster, cluster. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What? What? Now, here's a question. Uh -huh. You know, before we, we wrap up. Yeah. What fine. makes a successful hive? Like, what? What can one do to like make sure that <laughs> that box behind you makes a successful hive? Just because you, I'll, we'll put the bees out, and like we, we've had as many as like 65 hives up here, uh -huh. and somehow if you do everything right, they make no queens and they swarm a lot. So they're why, just. Well, why does that happen? I mean, they make no honey it's nature it's gotcha i don't purport to be a true farmer uh -huh. but this is as close to farming as you get without worrying about rain killing your crops yeah it's some hives will make like that's at you know that's at uh 150 pounds 40, 40 yeah that's about 150 pounds of honey right now in okay. that in that hive yeah well that's a pretty good hive this yeah. one only probably has like three frames so there's only like 25 pounds coming out of this gotcha one. but i mean we've had some that would have this is a super. We had some that have, have filled up like seven supers over time. Yeah. Like 230 pounds of honey in a hive. Wow. If I could duplicate that, you'd drive a newer vehicles and <laughs> live in bigger houses, you know? But you can't. It's just, it's, it's, just it it's just how it is. Yeah. Like some catch on and some just don't. Some catch on. And we try to keep them healthy. We try to do them with as few chemicals as possible. Uh huh. Um, there's lots of maladies that can impact bees. Yep. But, um, like, the, does there need to be flowers or vegetation around, or? No. If there are, fan, that helps. Uh -huh. Well, it's nice, but like I said, bees can fly up to 10 miles. So bees, a friend of mine said, you know, bees and you know, mules and people are, will do as little as they have to to still get fed. And that's, that's what, you know, that's, and that's a bee. A bee yeah. will work as little as it has to to still get fed. Gotcha. But if it has to fly three miles to find water, it will, and it'll bring it back. Love it. Yes. Love it. So. Cool. Yeah. Randall, I thought this was awesome. Thanks for uh, for showing us the uh, the hives. We'll I want to, uh, I want to pop in the top of them. Okay, just for one second. All right. You don't have any issues with colony collapse? Non-stop. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Seems like everybody. Does. Something called colony collapse. And here's where I stand on colony collapse. I think the vast majority of beekeepers, hobby beekeepers, small beekeepers that have what they think is colony collapses is they can't keep bees alive. The majority. But... How, why, why, why can't somebody keep it alive? They don't pay enough attention. They don't pay enough attention to what's called the mite load, M-I-T-E. Uh -huh. um, they just don't, don't keep a healthy queen. There's just a, they don't do the, win, the winter prep. Uh -huh. But um, it's, does it impact? Absolutely. Because I've been... pretty. We're pretty decent at what we do. And we've gone... And we've had times when we went from 60 hives that I lost 30 hives in a year. And Ooh. I'm doing the same thing or doing what I thought was proper, uh -huh. you know, year over year. So you see all the white? Dang. So yeah. This, that's new wax. So that means they're getting ready to cap this. Do you like wax? Like, do you like chewing on wax? What? No, I hate it. Really? Not, but a lot of, some people love it. So. Yeah, so that that's the, so they're they're starting to close those holes up. Okay, which looks really nice. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, so that means the three boxes below this are probably completely full. Uh huh. And this one's pretty close. So this this one doesn't need does not need a new box. Do you always keep the bottom two for the bees. Yeah. And then and anything yeah. stacked on top is going to be for business. because by the time we get to like October, so we let them start keep filling those boxes up until 
you know, through the, the rest of the fall. But they need about 60 pounds of honey in those two boxes to make it through winter. Gosh. So that's what they'll eat. Because there's not just not a lot of stuff that blooms. And um, see, look at this. Look how they, they, they lock this down. They build this so it just keeps the airflow locked out of this thing. They for have, they have for temperature? Huh? Temperature and humidity. So they control it. But um, that's cool, man. It this is, is awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, it's cool. I used to get really upset when I kill a bee and now you just put things back together and you crunch and you're like, that's why. Because <laughs> you don't have time. When you, when you don't have one hive, you're like, I mean, oh, it's, it's I mean, so it's important. Lot, I mean, it's so important. And then when you have, you know, 30 hives, it becomes a little bit of a business and you get to 60. And I can't, and like I'm working with a guy that has, like, that on? has uh, no, this is, that was, a, that was laying on the ground. Okay. And I just, we, um, we work with a guy that, um, actually we work with a lot of beekeepers, but um, the one I'm working with, one of them I'm working at has over like 6,000 hives. Well, what? Oh, yeah. 6,000? Oh, that's nothing. And then out west, there are beekeepers that have 200,000 hives. How much How much property would you, I mean, how much? Well, they move them. See, like for the almond crop in California, uh -huh. well, you want a story, there you go. Is, um, what, what is that? Almonds. Okay. The um, So almond is a very, 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 very um, water dependent crop. Okay. So you go and you plant it in the middle of the desert. It's the perfect place to plant it. Okay. So that's California. Okay. And but they every flower has to be pollinated. And these are almond trees. Uh -huh. And America makes I don't know. It's a crazy pretty plant. Ninety percent of the almonds in the, the world. We make. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's very expensive to get the bees there. But in like January, and February, we'll have 80, 90 percent of all managed bee beehives in America okay. are in Southern California. On the on the crop, yeah. So they're trucking them in, they truck them, truck them, and then they start moving them back across country, you know, for, you know, in, in Arizona and Texas, they got different crops that you know yeah. along the border, and then yeah. you know, Louisiana, and, and they just work them back east and north as the as the weather warms, uh -huh. and then they end up, you know, in Maine doing the blueberries, and you know, in, in middle of summer, yeah, and but then January they're all right back in California. Yeah. And so these, wow. so the, so hobbyists. There's a lot of hobbyists, but we have a very small percentage of bees compared to the, the big right. bees. Wow. How many? How many? I mean, there's probably a lot of hobbyists. Uh -huh. But how many like business or you know you know professionals yeah. maybe do like in, in the area? Is there like a is, there, is it a is it a big amount? Is no. it a small amount? There's like a dozen. There might no. It's probably. We are probably the only one that is our full-time profession. What? That's there it. There might be one more that's in in, in Mecklenburg or yeah. Mecklenburg and, and the surrounding mm -hmm. counties. There might be two, but so a very small amount. Very small amount. Oh, I, I didn't. There's, I, there's so, there are there's part of it is there are beekeepers uh -huh. and there are beehivers. Okay. Now beekeepers can usually keep their bees alive. Beehivers. You usually have to buy the bees every other year or so because the, the hobby, so they're the hobbyists. They're the ones that are just having fun at it, gotcha. and, and which for education for the kids, which is fantastic, and we need them. And I'm not berating, you know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, no, but no. turn it into a business. You've got to be able if you're going to raise some of your own honey, and that's all we do. We raise some. We don't raise all by any means. Yeah. Um, we far outstripped what we can raise. Yeah. You know what we could produce years ago. Gotcha. But um, we work with beekeepers in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. And then we have a, a, a partnership with a guy that um, we end up taking about 100 hives up to, I have land in Wilkes County where I grew up, uh -huh. that we make sourwood honey up there. And it's amazing. Man. So. Randall, this is awesome. All right, good. Part one of, uh, what, episode nine of, uh, of our episode, Cloister Honey. This was awesome. I'm not going to lie. I got a little nervous whenever we cracked open the second one. They were flying everywhere. But, uh, hey, we're good, unscathed. We're going to head back inside for episode or for the second part of this episode to uh, learn more about their story and uh, get Joanne here. So anyway, we'll see you guys in a minute. The restaurants you love, the food you crave, and the people that make it all happen. We tell their stories on the Paper Trails podcast with Albemarle Paper Supply.